uh, was like a little hole in the wall gym at like a little it was like almost like a shopping center right and because it was like serious it was like mirrors on all the walls and there was like no machines it was just like weights and it was like the bars and everything you had to set everything up yourself and then i went to la fitness and i realized like okay so the gym for most people is just walking around and it's a fashion show like i don't know when it is that you get in the shape to just walk around looking like this but that's what this gym is it's when you get into mikey c shape that's when I mean, the second floor. <laughs> yeah, second floor shape. Second floor guy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's it is true because it's like in all the fitness ads where you see all these people. On, I'm like, I know a Bowflex didn't get you that body. It's, <laughs> I, but Lord knows I tried it. <laughs> I want to. Um, I want to, and it's it's obviously going to be an uphill battle for me. I want to get paid to be in good shape and work out because I feel like that's the only way that I would do it. You know what I mean? Like that's the only way that I would have time at this point if it was my job to be in really good shape because like me and my wife have a Peloton. So I'll do that. I can go. I could ride the bike for half an hour. I can go and I can do like the stretching classes, the core classes and stuff like that. But like if I want to go and like pump actual like weights and like get super jacked and almost to the point where I'm like roided I feel like I would need to have like a sponsor so I could just be like yeah this is for work like I can't be editing stupidity today I need to be at the gym this is my job now I'm a professional weightlifter so someone has to pay you essentially is what you're saying yeah it would have to be it's not that they would have to pay me because that's my only incentive but I would need to put in the time that a full-time job would have you know what I mean to get in shape at this point yes well, a hundred percent. Like that's it reminds me of my dad loved making the joke every football Sunday when he was doing the morning show, where my mom was never asking my dad to do anything. Like she knew the drill. She'd been around long enough, but it would never stop my dad from making the joke. Sorry, gotta watch this for work. Like he's gotta sit down and watch seven hours of commercial free football because he's gotta know it for the next day. And so now if your wife gave you any grief about walking out the door going to the gym, it's like, sorry, honey, I gotta pay the bills. Like I, right. I gotta get this done. That's what Billy's saying. Yes. It becomes a full time job for Billy. And so therefore, right. But, he has a built in excuse. Like, yeah, I gotta go to the gym. You know, no, but like, stuff. we were saying before that it's kind of weird. I, mean, I don't want to be judgmental, but it's kind of weird for like people that are like, what you're going to be. That that's like their <laughs> whole identity is like going to the gym. Right. But it's a job for a lot of people. Right. Especially like influencers, because like they're selling all of the, the different products, clothes, like leggings, uh, supplements, whatever. So like that's their job. They just get to go up and go to the gym like. How great is that? Because like we should be going to the gym just to be healthy and kind of exercising or whatever, right? And it's like it, they just have to get up and go to the gym every day. It and makes then they you look wonder great. why Chris it's, Cotter does awesome. it. I mean, seriously, and Ryan Rosillo, <laughs> what is he doing it for? I mean, <laughs> Rosillo should have some sort of like. Fitness oh, I'm certain he does. Right? I, I would he think better. Rosillo has some sort of like Mike. You imagine he has some sort of gym sponsor, right? He better. I felt so bad the other day. I was driving around because I live in the same area as Rosillo now, and I haven't seen him him yet. No, I haven't (laughs) seen him yet, but I rolled up to a traffic light, and a guy rolled up next to me. And you know how when people have the same car as you on the road, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, where people like throw you the high sign when they're driving past you? So like when I see other people that are driving the same car as me, a lot of them will just like give you a little wave. It's like, oh, we chose to buy the same car. Does that not happen to you guys? What kind of car is it? Yeah, no, no, it happens to me. Uh, my daughter wanted a Jeep, a Jeep Wrangler. Yep. And anytime I drive that Jeep and pass someone else who has a Jeep and I hate it and it makes me sick to my stomach and I don't do it in return. But yes, they'll wave to me because like, or honk or, you know, flash their lights like, hey, we have the same car. And I'm like, I don't give a shit, you know? Oh. <laughs> yes, that's because I drive a Bronco and I've still gotten it oh. from Jeep people, too. Really? Wow. Yeah. 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 The Jeep anything cult. where you can take the top off, all of a sudden right. people are like, "Oh, hey, brother, good to see you." Wait, yes. your Broncos top comes off? Yep. Wow. So I, mm. when I saw the Broncos were coming back, I wanted a Bronco so bad. I have a, a 2013 Hyundai Sonata, so it's very different than a Bronco. So I saw <laughs> when the Broncos were coming back, I wanted it so bad, right? And then I went to Detroit to do the Miguel Cabrera thing, and I took my wife and my daughter with me. And then we had to like rent from the car rental place, a car seat, and we had to fill it. And then I was like, man, this car, like, I thought this would be awesome. 
when you have a kid, you have so much shit that yeah. it didn't all fit in the Brock. I'm like, I need something massive just to fit the diaper bags and to fit the car seat. And when we get back home, we have two dogs. And then what if we have another kid? Like, I couldn't fit it all in a Bronco. Oh, <laughs> Billy, this past weekend, I had to drive. So my dad was in town calling the Chargers Dolphins game for Westwood one. And I went to the game with him. I hadn't been to SoFi. I wanted to go over. And so his crew was going over from their hotel. And my dad was like, the rental car is not big enough. Can we take your car over there? And I'm like, sure. I got a back seat in this thing. It's the two door. Getting four people into my car was like a full clown car situation. And I didn't have enough trunk space for all their bags. And I felt really awkward the whole time trying to get the seat forward far enough. And they still, like, they weren't big guys and they're trying to squeak out. And I was like, wow, this is a really selfish car for me to have. It serves only me and no one It's else. your car. You're not, you listen, you didn't buy it with the idea of picking people up and schlepping them all over town. I mean, come on, man. I've By the way, life's. Go ahead. No, no, you go. I was going to say life stage uh, disparity here. You talking about pulling up to somebody and waving to somebody who's got their car. I drive a sensible three, you know, third row seat car with a bunch of car seats and diaper bags in it. When I pull up the next to somebody who's driving the same thing, we all just kind of look down and like, what the fuck happened to my life? It's a look of sadness. You're right. (laughs) The minivan look of sadness. I've always wanted a Jeep Wrangler, but it feels like I wouldn't have enough trunk space. And I just know that like, I wouldn't call myself a hoarder. I just say I'm prepared for anything. So I have lots of things on hand. Like I have I have in the back of my car because my wife uh, has a little cousin who now is like 12 or something. Right. But when he was like four or five, he would go to like baseball practice. So I went to Dick's and I bought one of those giant tubs of baseball. So in the trunk of that car, I still have like 60 baseballs. I have golf clubs. I have racquetball equipment. I have like anything. Not a that hoarder, I would though. Need. I mean, huh? yeah. <laughs> what'd you say i mean not a hoarder though i like listen Roy is sitting ne- Bill- but, gojo i'm sorry roy is sitting right next to me and when billy said that we both started shaking our heads mm-hmm. you're I'm not a for- hoarder i'm you're ready for a bit hoarder no i'm ready for any adventure and i couldn't do that with a jeep wrangler mikey so my wife we got her a car i'm wondering what kind of car you have with a third row seat because that seemed like very important now that we have a child is the third row and we very ended important. up getting for her a mazda uh, the Odyssey. G- I just heard Roy the Odyssey. Roy Odyssey. The Odyssey. The Odyssey. The Odyssey. The Odyssey is the way to go. Yeah, you have a yep. you have a CX Odyssey's nine. Huge. No, I don't. Um, I went to test drive it, and I didn't make it out of the parking lot. I came to the guy, and I go, "I don't fit in this," and I handed yeah. him the keys. So we got we got one of those. My dream. I know I've told you my dream, and I've already told you three different cars. A minivan would suit me so well because oh. I don't care about impressing absolutely anyone. And I right. told this story a number of times, but like. I have a cousin who's the same age as me. And when we were like 25 or something, he broke up with his longtime girlfriend. So like that summer, we were going out a lot. And we went out in his mom's minivan like four or five times. And it was like four guys. And it was this minivan. It was amazing because the the second row was like pilot seats. So like we were living Mm -hmm. like kings, just like stretching out going out to Coconut Grove just to like go to a bar. And it's not like we were being like, oh, let's get like a bunch of people and bring them back with us. It was it was nothing like that. It was just like, man, we have so much leg room in this. This is awesome. So right. much room for activities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like you know what they need weed. though. Yeah, yeah. Well, they need more minivans with all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive for us. Really? For us people who have to drive in the snow up here. That's Go, Joe. I got a minivan after my kids. After yeah. my kids grew up. Yeah. <laughs> Just more space to fill with smoke, baby. Just more space to fill with smoke. I, by the way, speaking of all, all of this, reminded me. I came across this book. I was looking to go buy books for my nephew. He's six months old. He can't read, but his parents read to him, and I just need something to get him. And I came across this book, and it speaks to, like, everything you guys were talking about, but still felt a little f***ed up that they would actually write it. My dad used to be so cool. (laughs) (laughs) Like, we're really saying the quiet part loud now, aren't we? And, like, the best up part, because I was curious, and so I popped open the book. The whole point of the book is, like, yeah, your dad sacrificed everything that he loved about life for you. I'm like, I don't think that's supposed to be, like, a good moral. Like, congratulations. Your father's gonna work, trip. Yeah, your father's going to work through years of resenting you for ending his career as a rock and roll star. The book. 
When did your dad become uncool to you, Mike? <laughs> oh, great question. I mean, I think I think it was most pronounced because it wasn't like uncool as much as it was. I saw his clear unwillingness to do certain things when we were doing the morning show together. That was where I learned how different we were because right. I learned all the stuff that my mom has gotten thrown in her lap all these years. Like anytime a password doesn't work right or anytime he can't open up something the right way. Stu, I'm sure you guys have seen it hopping onto Zooms with him, Mikey A, where the minute something breaks down, <laughs> now all of a sudden it gets dumped to somebody else. And he always makes the point. He's like, I could learn and I should learn how to do it, but I've always got so-and-so here. Like he has gotten so good at just deftly offloading all of that shit onto us. And so I just saw it firsthand every day there doing the morning show. <laughs> I believe I arrived there um, roughly when my kids turned like 15 or 16, where I was so cool to them for so long and then became a complete embarrassment. And what you have to do is just sink into it and try to embarrass them at all costs. Like, that's mm. what you have to do. That's what, for me, that's all I have left in life. That and the Jets. I mean, that's about it. I, mean, I thought that you were going to make fun of Mike's dad's uh, learned helplessness, let's call it. But, yeah. Gojo, two days ago, I'm not even joking, two days ago, Stugat was like, I don't know how to make tea. Like, I can't, I can't make tea. We were in the studio. We're like, well, you get a cup. And he's like, I know, I know. He's like, but I can't do it. Can someone do it? And we're like, no, let's walk through this together. Because well, Whittingham has... usually does it for yeah. me, Bill, in my defense. He, and he was he, out that day. And so he always has Whittingham do it for him. But again, it's making tea. We have the cups, we have water, and we have the tea bags. And he's like, I don't know how to do it. And we're like, okay, we got this. Like, calm down. We'll get through this together. So we're like, okay, get the cup. We have one of those like water right. uh, like right. dispensers right. Yeah. and it has a hot side and a cold <laughs> side. So it's not even like he needs to go to a microwave or anything. It's like the hot water exists. So it's like, okay, just you put your cup here where the hot water is. Right. So he goes, he puts it there and we're like, okay. And I just put the tea bag in the tea and let it sit and you're good. And he's like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, can't wait for can't wait for Woody to come back. Though. Yes. No, the you best part. No, the best me. part of the story is the next day after learning how to do it, I asked uh, Jer Bear, Jeremy yeah. Sache, to do it again. Yeah, <laughs> hey, listen, you should definitely know how to make tea, but I'll bet right. there tastes nothing better than a tea made by Whittingham. Oh, like I just oh, imagine it's just oh, next level, right? With tea. Oh, oh <laughs> my God, the love, the care that he puts into a cup of tea. It's absolutely, it's second to none, to be honest with you. <laughs> I feel like Witty approaches his tea the way that the very like most ardent coffee drinkers approach like hand selecting the best beans and grinding it on their own. Like whatever you can do to that end for tea is probably Witty's process. Yes. Yeah. Fancy young lad. I mean, <laughs> he is a, he is a fancy young lad. Um, by the way, uh, welcome to Gojo with Mike Golick Jr. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, this is a <laughs> holiday podcast, so none of these are supposed to make sense anyway. They're all one-offs oh. that I did with my friends, uh, Stu Gotts, Billy, Mikey A. The gang's all here. I honestly had no idea which podcast we were doing. Like uh, Stupidity, God Bless Football, Gojo. I haven't stopped talking since Saturday. Like, Sorry, so, advance. So you got, yeah, I didn't say download, subscribe, rate, and review. Do you ever yeah. feel like you only exist on podcast form yes. or in like some, like I, I've, and I feel like you guys can all appreciate this as, People that are now outside of ESPN, you guys over at Meadowlark have been really for the last year and a half doing all this on your own. And I just feel like I'm constantly selling audio out of the trunk right now, which means I'm always <laughs> talking with somebody like my parents now have a running joke. When my mom calls, if I send her right to voicemail, the minute I call her back, the first thing she says is you were doing a podcast, weren't you? And the answer is always yes. Yes. Uh, somehow this has felt like more work than we were at ESPN. It's crazy. Am I wrong, Bill? It's like I'm always talking. I'm always speaking into something. Are you worried that you're going to run out of things to say? Yes. It's like it's something that I think I'm like, I'll go, I'll do whatever podcast you want. But like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Like, I've said everything. <laughs> when I was thinking about this today, I'm like, if they come to me and they're like, what do you want to talk about? It's like, my daughter's been sick. I've been watching a bunch of kid movies. I'm glad I had a kid because I never would have watched these movies before. Sing two, incredible. Billy. I didn't I didn't see Sing One, but Sing Two was amazing. So I'll tell you Sing this. Sing one far better. Sing one really? way, way better movie. 
Really? Way better movie. Wow. Because uh, you get you get the putting the band together. And I think every song-based movie, and this is a lot of my Pitch Perfect coming out, is defined by the audition scenes that you have. And you mm. don't get the audition scenes in Sing 2. But I will say, all of Sing 2 is worth it just to get Halsey singing that song in the performance at the end of that. I forget what her character is. The Fox whose dad's like the evil or the wolf. Yes. Whose yeah, dad's yeah. the wolf. evil overlord of the company. But when she sings that cover of the struts, I am transported. That's the best part of the whole movie for me. Wow. So I need to see sing one just because it's better. I was like, this movie's awesome, but sing one, I have to pay to rent and sing two was free. So I'm like, we're going to do right. sing two. And my, my daughter's a year and a half, so she doesn't really know. She just likes the music and she dances and like it's great entertainment. So I should go back and see Sing One. Today I saw a movie called Home, which is Rihanna's a little girl and there's an alien and they're like saving the planet. But she was like kind of sick when this was going on. So I missed a lot of the key plot points. So I'm going to have to go back and watch it again. Really? Yeah, but kids movies are awesome. I'm glad I had a kid just because I could watch all these movies that I missed out on. Like I didn't even know about this Sing phenomenon until one time we went to a theater and I saw that Sing 2 was coming out. I'm like, that seems that seems good, I guess, right? But I don't have a kid, so I'm not going to watch this. Now that yeah. I have a kid, I can watch all the kids' Billy. movies. Yeah, Wait till you get to be able to do kids' TV shows, because the new DuckTales was amazing. Really? It was incredible. Square. They gave Huey, Dewey, and Louie their own personalities. Hmm. So they we... weren't just three ducks. We, we tried for <laughs> at least until she was like a year to not really do lots of TVs and screens and stuff like that. Like, that's what they had recommended. Um, but we eventually caved to like a year. So, like, she's watching more now. We started with Coco Melon, but they say that's like really bad because it's like just overstimulating the kids constantly. So, I mean, if you're like Coco Melon, people don't sue us. But that's what they said is that I guess it like overstimulates the kids. So we tried to move away. And the one thing that she likes, and it's like the weirdest thing, and I was talking to Pablo Torre about this at Moss the other day, which is the strangest conversation to tell you I was having with Moss. I haven't seen Pablo in probably three years because of the pandemic. And he and this is what you talked about? This, <laughs> is what we, this is what we talked about. As I told him, I, we were talking about being a parent because he's you know a parent too. He has, I think, like a two or three-year-old. So we were talking about being dads. And I was telling him, like, the show that my daughter likes the most right now, and it's so strange, and I don't know how we got it to happen, is, like, 1990s Barney. Like, we just oh, play Barney no. for her. She oh. loves Barney. Like, she seems Barney's to like great. The, the human shows better than, like, the cartoons. So, like, we showed her Coco Melon. We showed her some of these other ones. And then we got to Barney. Really likes Barney. And the sweetest thing that she does, and it's, like, my favorite thing, is when the I Love You song at the end comes, just because she sees the kids hug Barney, all that, no matter what's going on, as soon as she hears the music, she looks for one of us to go up to and like hug. And then sometimes she'll give us a kiss and it's Aww. like, oh, oh Barney. Wow. I love you, Barney. Like, this is such a great moment. Uh, Get you a VHS player for uh, seriously. For Christmas. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know what? I should because there's only like three seasons. So we've watched every episode like 30 times already. It's funny because one of the uh, the big things when my kids were growing up was High School Musical. And mm. so they loved it. Like, they couldn't watch it enough. And I loved it so much that I would watch it without them. I'm <laughs> making a yeah. shameful admission. <laughs> Zach Efron, man. Woof. <laughs> Stu Gatz. I, or Stu, Stu, I mean, we're all in this together. Oh, Zach, listen, the time Zach Efron time. continues to age really well. I mean, him and yeah. um, what was it? Uh, it wasn't a 90210. It was the Baywatch remake. Hubba oh, Hubba. Yeah. Oh yeah, did you hubba, see, hubba, did you see, <laughs> he has a new movie coming out where I think he's playing like a wrestler from the seventies. So he had like this weird like seventies haircut. His, his body is way too jacked. Like there's no way that any human should look the way that Zac Efron looks. <laughs> what you're gonna tell me next? Joe Rogan's gonna come out and say Zac Efron's taking steroids, and I'm gonna that was so surprised then too. Like, I, I didn't see the clip and I didn't listen to his podcast. I just saw the headline where it's like Joe Rogan says The Rock uses steroids. It's like mm, yeah, probably. <laughs> but now, uh, Billy, you asked me, Billy, you asked me if I ever worry about, well, I have nothing else to say. Yeah, uh, I will tell you that I am fresh off a glorious segment in which we did fire hydrants and bowling balls in sports. <laughs> like, oh, it was amazing. How does like, that 45 work? minutes of Kirby Puckets and Robert Newhouse's. I mean, mm. uh, Maurice Jones drew. We were oh, just trying to MJD. figure out who's a fire hydrant and who's a bowling ball. And Roy, we started off with Kirby Puckett who I think someone suggested was a fire hydrant, and Roy correctly um, changed it to he's a bowling ball. 
Mm. And I think Kirby Puckett is like the definition of bowling ball athlete. So I guess to answer your question, the only reason I bring it up is there's always something to talk about, Billy, because I have never <laughs> been so big <laughs> my entire life. Okay. Oh, like my Uncle Bob. I've been in our show in a decade. <laughs> my Uncle Bob, fire hydrant. Wow. Really? He's the one who he, he said being a nose tackle in the NFL is being a fire hydrant in a dog show. Oh, wow. Uh, Jim Burt. Now, no one's going to understand that, but that's kind of a fire hydrant. He was a nose tackle for the Giants back in the 80s. <laughs> Whittingham would get so mad at me right now. Did you know? I only go back to the 80s. He asked, did you watch sports after 86? I'm like, nah. <laughs> did you know uh, Marcus Freeman was on with us a couple of times and you have a relationship with him as well? Did yeah. you know that he's like a fan of your Uncle Bob? Like we were talking about Bob. I thought you were talking stories. to me in my relationship with Marcus Freeman. Yeah, no, you don't have one of those. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> he was so, do, <laughs> He was so excited when he, we asked us, like, how many goals have you met? And he's like, I met Bob from Safe by the Bell. And we're like, ah, be careful. I don't <laughs> think he likes that. <laughs> I, man, it doesn't matter if he likes it or not. That's been the number one word association with my last name since I was a little kid. Like the height of Mike wow. and Mike when it was at its absolute biggest and people would see my last name. Like, You're, was your uncle in the college years? I'm like, he wasn't even on the good save by the bell, and people yeah. know that. That's just a reminder of how much bigger pop culture is than sports. That lasted like nine episodes. Yeah. Did your friend did your friends or like people in high school find it cool that your dad was hosting the biggest uh morning show in America, sports radio show in America? Um, most of my friends didn't because they knew him and they knew me, so they kind of just knew him as Mr. Golick. Right. But I think other people probably did. I think so. Yeah, I like my daughters when they realized how much their friends in high school in particular loved me and our show. That was a bad day when they told me like my daughter started to realize, listen, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, Mike, that they can leverage that into whatever guy they wanted. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's I hate see, them. <laughs> that's a head, that's a heady wow. play. I didn't think I about it them, from that but, perspective know. because people were always like, man, I bet growing up like that, like. You know, you probably like, and even now, like doing this job, they're like, you probably get DMs from tons of girls. I'm like, I get DMs from 25 year old guys <laughs> right. asking me to come on their podcast. <laughs> Those are what my inboxes are chock full of. So we're a different type of celebrity. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I'm very the surprised. celebrity you don't want to be. <laughs> no, it's not like being a musician. Like <laughs> I'm very surprised to guys, and I don't want to sound like rude. And I mean, it's good for us. Like. I'm surprised there's like high schoolers that listen to the show. Uh, they do. I, like, yeah, listen, their friends. It surprises me. The, it's well, like we've got it old. No, but, but Billy, the way it works is like for me, the way I got turned on to sports radio, Mike and the Mad Dog was sitting in my dad's car. He was driving me to and from yeah. practice, lacrosse practice, basketball practice, whatever. And he had him on. And so I was listening by extension. And then I became a fan of theirs. And then once I could drive. I would start to listen to them on my own. And I think some of that happened where their dads were listening. They were in the car. And then once they could drive, they took a liking to the show. They listened. And yeah, they liked me. Like they wanted to meet me. And my and my daughter seized on those opportunities. Like they really did. It's like, like I can get you credit, what you want. I guess. Yeah. It's going to cost you. <laughs> Much to my chagrin and to their credit, you know? <laughs> that was always my favorite when. Uh, I would be out in public with my dad and then other dads would bring their very young kids up and be like, oh, he wants to take a picture with you. And my dad's always like, that kid has no idea who I am. You want to take a picture with me. Just say you want to take a picture. <laughs> oh. I'm taking many a pictures <laughs> for my daughters. I mean, <laughs> it's so bad, uh, but they, they have grown to appreciate it. And even in college now. Um, they get, I was going to you know, ask about that, Stu Gatz, yeah. how that's gone. College kids the, are still listening to us, thankfully. You know, the last time I talked to you though was when you were trying to, I think, subvert uh some guy that your daughter had met on Move In Day. Wasn't there something that happened where you were trying to set the tone on Move In Day to try yeah. and like keep guys away there? How did baseball that go? Baseball player, right? That's right. Yeah, it was baseball a baseball player. player. Yeah, I said, listen, this is the room where everyone strikes out. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> How did how did year one of or how did fall one of college dad life go for you? Uh, but Mike, I w what I would also do is they would stop in the room and like they're trying to be nice. OK, I'll answer your question in a second. Yeah, here. don't worry about the yeah, questions. Yeah, just but they, 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 listen, listen, OK, we're men here, right? 
Oh, Lord, where is this oh, going? They're 18 years old. They're stopping at my daughter's dorm room. They're, you know, introducing themselves. But we know what's going on inside, okay? We know what they're thinking. We know what they're checking out. We know what they're looking for when they go into the dorm. No one's that nice. No friendship. One... <laughs> no, yeah. right, friendship. They're looking for you. You're famous. <laughs> right, they were looking for me. And I would just walk up to them and be like, hey, guys, keep it moving. This is the room where everyone strikes out, the baseball players. And then I'd see him again, and I'd do this. And so Mike will have to describe it. But I, I did this. Like, I saw him walking down the hallway, oh, pointed at my eyes, <laughs> pointed at them. Oh, <laughs> Gave him the yeah, old Robert De Niro. My yeah, Robert De Niro. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> and and they, they thought you were joking, but since then you've visited your daughter every weekend since, so they know that you weren't Hell playing yeah. around. You're there Listen, every weekend. You also search. You, you, you try to find a smart kid who wants to make some money, and you oh, seek him boy. out, okay? But he's also got, like, somewhat of, uh, you know, like an athletic body, Okay. And you got to find that kid. You give him a couple of hundred dollars and you say, listen, the girl right over there. See her. She's mine. No, like, my daughter. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure she's OK. Yeah. Protect her. Keep her out of harm's way. I did that. I do. <laughs> the, I have a kid the on the joke's going to be on you when like the next holiday them, comes. I got to send them a W-9. I mean. The joke's going to be on you when the next holiday comes. And your daughter brings that person home, and it's like, yeah, you've been paying me to date your daughter all of these years. That'd be okay. I like I hand selected this person. He's fine. Okay. <laughs> I hey, vetted to, him, Bill. To Billy's point earlier, paid incentives. It's the best way to get stuff done. <laughs> he got you, Bill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> paid to get in shape. Oh paid my to- god. I feel like they would pay me to get in shape, but I still wouldn't get in shape, you know. Well, wait, Stu Gatz, I do have to ask on that end because me and Mike Yeh were talking before this and he brought up that at one point when he was doing a show with you, he was sitting because I said I jumped on with you. This will release a couple weeks after, but I jumped on with you guys in the Levitard show and it was six o'clock my time local. So I woke up like you before weekend observations, like eight minutes before I was supposed to be on. And I just poured some coffee into this mug and wandered over. And Mike Yeh said, oh, well. One time I was drinking coffee around Stu Gotts and he coffee shamed me and I went to take a step and he went, that's not good for you. <laughs> he said, what are you drinking in that cup? What? I was like, eh, just I my word of coffee. He goes, wow. That's not good I did you. that. <laughs> Roy, tell the audience, tell everyone how many espressos I have a day. Uh, what, six? I yeah. knew it. <laughs> yeah. and the I double, knew it. The double. <laughs> six doubles. <laughs> Every time I'm on the phone with him and it's like, Stugatz, we got to record in 20 minutes. He's like, oh, buddy, I just walked into Starbucks. I'll be home in five. <laughs> He's always at Starbucks. <laughs> I was just looking out for Mike EA, though. I mean, yeah. It's like, Stugatz, you 100% Where were you my freshman just... year of college? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Stu Gatz had read an article, but there's no way he had read one of the new headlines that right. comes out with an article every six months about if coffee is or isn't good for you at that no idea. juncture of science. I don't yeah. even know anymore. It gives me energy. I mean, yeah, it makes like me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But there is something funny about the guy who goes to dead shows, smokes weed and cigarettes yeah. uh, and six espressos a day telling Mike, yay, hey, cup of coffee. No good. Yeah. Hey, what is that coffee? No good for you. <laughs> Stu Gatz, who once showed me his dinner when Abby was away, that was a bag of Cheetos, a bottle mm. of tequila, and weed. Oh, oh what a night. Wow. <laughs> what a night. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> I see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Seems like heaven, no? <laughs> it's not heaven. It's Stu Gatz's house. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. By the way, right. to go all the way back to my original point, when I pulled up to that stoplight in the Bronco and I thought that guy was waving me on there, I said I felt bad because he rolled down his window. I thought he was doing the high sign thing and ask me where and when I got the Bronco because he had a Bronco. He actually looked at me and said, Rusillo, what's going on, man? And I thought, oh, no, no way. Well, and I felt no. bad because I wasn't like, it's middle of football season. I'm not in great shape. And so now this guy's going to go for like, yeah, right. I saw Ryan Rusillo the other day. Kind of looks, looks like, like he's letting shit. himself go. And I know <laughs> Rosilla like works so hard on his body. <laughs> you have more hair than Rosilla. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> oh, man. So unnecessary. I mean, I shave my head. Rosilla kind of still rides it out. I have a lot of respect yeah. for that. Uh, so do I. Have you, so you haven't seen Rosilla, though, right? No, not once. What do you think you'd do if you saw Rosilla? Like, if you saw Rosilla, but Rosilla didn't know that you had seen him, like, you're, you know, you, like, would you say hi to him? Yeah. I'm asking for a reason. I saw Colin Cowherd at Dana Point, California. I saw him. He didn't see me. 
I sprinted away from him like he was the plague. Okay. Why? <laughs> because Billy, he'll box me in and all of a sudden I'm on vacation with my kids. He'll box me in with a cup of soup in his hand, even outdoors in California, and he'll corner me and he'll ask me about the UM recruiting class. Every <laughs> single time I saw do Colin the whole Coward, show. I know. Every time I saw him, he would he always had a cup of soup. He was always walking around doing a, I don't know, whatever. And he would corner me and ask me about the canes like I'm some sort of hurricane expert. And I, just because I was from Miami. And so I saw him and I went the other way. I, I just didn't want to deal with the conversation. You know, you're going to get five hot takes. You know, how you doing? Small talk. He doesn't really care. He doesn't care about your podcast. He only cares about his. The Blazing Whoa. Five. I mean, I, I didn't want to deal with it, you know? <laughs> Stu Gatz, it's so funny that you mentioned that because you're right. Like, I, I do that a lot, not just with, like, other people that work in the industry. I used to actively try and avoid my neighbors when I lived in Connecticut. Like, <laughs> if I walked out to my porch and I saw them out there, I would go back in and I would wait till they were gone just so I could get to where I was going without having to talk to anybody. But, per, like, specifically with Rosillo, the only place I used to see him when we were in Connecticut was at the gym. We both belong to the same gym. Right. And anytime I would walk up there, Rosillo and I don't really know each other super well, but like we were familiar enough. We we're around the same place. There's not that many people that live in Connecticut. And I would walk into the gym and every time I would see Ryan, he'd be sitting down and I'd ask him like, Hey Ryan, what's going on, man? How's everything going? And it would just be this. Well, and then we would spend 45 minutes yes. commiserating about whatever had gone on yes. at work or whatever one of us was upset about. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, well, I just warmed up and then got cold. So now I'm just going to go home. Like I'm not going to work out at all today. And so it used to be when I would see Ryan in the gym, I would just kind of stop what I was doing because it was too small for us to avoid each other. And yeah. I knew 45 minutes later, my thought of a workout was going to be useless at that point. When Rosillo gives you the, you know, 45 minutes of complaints are coming after. I mean, oh, that's not nice. <laughs> no, Billy, I, he's a friend of mine. I like Ryan <laughs> Rosillo, but I have been on the receiving end of what Mike just described. And I'm telling you, what comes after is 45 minutes of just unbelievable. It's great, but you have to be in the right frame of mind, not at a gym. Okay. But that's what he does. I mean, Billy, there's not people you would avoid if you saw in the media. Like Tim Kirchin, I would run up to him and I'd give him a hug. But it's there are certain people, and Colin Cowherd is one of those for me. Where like, no, I'm on vacation, man. I don't need, I don't need a blazing five. Okay, I mean, I'm I'm still at the point where I assume that no one knows who I am, so I don't go up to people because like I true. don't think that these people will be familiar with who I am, and then it'll be weird. You know what I mean? Like I'll go be like, hey, how's it going? They'll be like, you want a picture? And then I'll be like, I guess, sure, yeah, let's let's <laughs> take a picture. I wish that you would have go, Joe, just like after that interaction texted ryan and just been like hey i'm sorry and i'll be like for what and you'd be like someone someone thinks you're out of shape now because they saw me and thought it was you like i, I apologize that i don't keep in better shape just yeah. <laughs> people confuse us in the future No, because i do would hate that one person thought he looked like just one person out there thought he was golic yes but you I, look great like you're in, in i agree great I, shape i'm in great shape relative to me but like Ryan's in so much better shape. Like that guy's lived yes. in the gym. I take a bunch yes. of breaks, college football season. I'm going down and sucking down whatever's in a press box and any stop I have along the way. So by the end of the season, like I'm a little more of like an out of shape blocking tight end than I am what Ryan is right now, which is like a decent off ball linebacker. So right. yeah, Almost Zach of, Thomas like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A lot of that great chest, real great bowling ball, by the way. Yeah. Well, oh, fire man. hydrant. Yeah. Zach was... Thomas is a fire hydrant. Are you kidding me? Zach Thomas is definitely a fire hydrant. Thank I don't you. I don't feel like he moves well enough to be considered a bowling ball. Like when you talked about right. MJD, like that's perfect. That's a perfect bowling ball. He might yeah, be the perfect sports bowling ball. Maybe Kirby Puckett. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I, I have a question for Too you. Too soon. Oh, God. oh no. wow. <laughs> I mean, why? Jesus. <laughs> you guys I have a question for you as a as a what? former college athlete <laughs> and i don't mean this to be insulting but i i I'm actually... uh, of the college <laughs> athletes available to you you're choosing me over mike Golden jr <laughs> you're very specific for this because we have you know i'll just say mike you mike you, you did you do anything in college or no uh, i did not i drank oh okay well ah! we'll say you're a, a college drinker so like we have people, I, I only did a year of track in college, 
uh gojo did you did four years of football right or did you do extra time uh, i did five technically it was on the five-year plan okay mm-hmm. cool so so you guys and i don't mean this to be as an, an insult and i know it's going to come off that way but i'm genuinely curious at right. what point how do i phrase this at what point did you i don't want to say did you give up but at what point did you just stop <laughs> like working out if that makes sense because like i'm not working out as much and it's like catching up to me and Gojo works out in the off season. So, like, at what point in your like life and development, once you have kids and all that, do you just say like, it, "I'm I'm not going to the gym anymore"? Like, we're well, done are you with saying it. in college, or are you saying no, just in your in life. life in general? No, in college, life. it was right after my sophomore season. I was top ten in the country in scoring. It resulted in three wins for our team, and uh, we were three and eight. Uh, but I didn't care. I had a fucking great season, and that's all that matters. And I stopped right there. Okay. Now I so for two back- years you just stopped working. You had the best season of uh, your life, and uh, you decided to follow it up with "I'm just not going to try anymore." For two Billy, years. if the best season of my life is going to result in three wins and us not making any sort of tournament, then what's the fucking points? I mean, seriously, I had the season. I made my point. I was good. Okay, I, I made my God. point. I was good. I <laughs> made my point. I hope to God you weren't like a captain or something on this team. I was. I know. That's. I wore the C my junior and senior year. <laughs> the two years that you gave up, you were wearing a C. Yeah. What were your records? Coach didn't know years? I gave up, Billy. He didn't know. He thought it was. You were. Game. Oh, you were the original quiet quitter. <laughs> yeah. What What were your records those years? Oh, we were bad. Uh, we were bad, Billy. My first year was was our best year. My freshman year, I think we had five wins. So um, it, it coincides with the amount of effort you were putting in. You realize that, right? Probably, yeah. Uh, the the years I wore the C, I believe we had junior senior year. I believe I was we had a combined three wins. <laughs> but Billy, even without working out, I was putting up numbers. I mean, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> so you gave up in college is the answer. Well, I gave up in college. Then I started again. Okay, because you know, dating seed, all that. I was just trying to to you know. Yeah. Get in get better the, shape. Get the V-necks to fit a little tighter. Mm. Exactly right, Gojo. Yes. Uh, you sound experienced. <laughs> so um, uh, I would say I gave up. Hmm. Like right after we had kids. Like that was. Yeah. yeah it's life's over. I mean, <laughs> as you have said and stated, Billy, recently, what the fuck? <laughs> Stu Gotts just pulled up next to me in the third row uh, SUV. That's what yeah. that was. Yeah. Life, honest... life is over. <laughs> right. With a bong in my hands. Yeah. <laughs>